All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We're being joined now by Clemson head coach Davo Sweeney. We will turn it over to him for opening comments, then we'll leave the line open for questions. Whenever it comes time to ask questions, if you'll do us a favor, A, please turn your video on, and B, uh, please announce your name and affiliation prior to your question. So with that, we will turn it over now to Coach Sweeney. Okay, uh, thank you, Ross. Well, uh, just a special night. Uh, this is this has been a part of a lot of – a lot of great games, a lot of openers, uh, but this is a game that, that hopefully I can coach a, uh, many, many more years, but this is one that I'll never forget. Uh, truly special to be a part of it. Uh, the focus and the mental toughness uh, that it, that it uh, took to get to this point is special. And uh, man, just really proud of our team. Uh, you know, we, when I got the job, 12 years ago, we, one of our first, we set our goals out. One was to win the opener. You know, we're 11 and one in our openers. And uh, I'm really proud of that. And that, that's the credit to our, our strength conditioning, uh, how we train, and then how we, how we do camp, how we prepare. Uh, I, I was really impressed with our team tonight. We had a couple of miscues early, uh, you know, but so, so proud of our guys, especially our, our, our first groups. Thought they played really, really well. Uh, and uh, just fun to see us play. Uh, but we'll get better. Uh, great teams get better. And uh, we got a lot of things on tape, a lot of situations that sometimes take four or five games to, to pop up in, in, in games. Uh, we got a lot of work uh, that's going to help our team. And we got to play a lot of people. We played 78 out of the 80 that, that made the trip. Uh, and that's going to that's gonna help us because – you know, you don't know what you you just you think you know, but until you go play and kind of get exposed a little bit, sometimes it has it becomes a little more real than practice. And we got a lot of guys that are going to be really good players for us. But if we had needed them to to win the game tonight, you know, they weren't quite ready. And uh, and, and again, sometimes you got to be exposed a little bit uh, to see the light. And uh, so I, I I think we're going to have an enormous amount of growth from uh, our backups and uh, but as far as our frontline guys man they were ready to play uh, they played really really well we had a few miscues few missed missed uh, plays here and there but offensively 561 total yards and you know Trevor set a all-time record for passing for opener Travis Etienne had his 18th uh, 100 yard game that's a record uh, you know uh, just a just a tremendous uh, effort all across the board lots of guys touch the ball our tight ends you know just so good to see Braden Galloway you know back out there and uh, again we spread the ball around got all those backs in there it was good to see that and then defensively you saw those you know you know Brzee and Miles Murphy showed up pretty quick uh, I knew they would and we played a bunch of guys on defense and a lot of those guys uh, got exposed a little bit some of those backups uh, but but I'm excited because I know the type of young young players they are and how much it means to them and uh, this is going to help them get better. But having six sacks uh, is, is impressive. And, uh, and a bunch of guys, man, Vontae Bentley, Brzee, Murphy, uh, KJ, uh, I think Spectre had one, and, and uh, Reagan Upshaw. Uh, it's fun to see Reagan, you know, get his opportunity to play uh, meaningful snaps. I think he's finally in the right position. He's really developed into a football player now. And, He's got some good stuff to him that's going to be able to help our team. And then BT, you know, BT set the record uh, for PATs. He's 90 for 90 and, you know, hit a 42-yarder, a 52-yarder. But, again, a lot of good situational work. You know, the minute drive, we had some two – get the ball back defense. Uh, so, a lot of good things that came up that we can teach from. And uh, but just, just super proud of our guys uh, to come on the road and uh, – you know, get, get your first road win and an ACC win, uh, it's, it's special. But uh, I'm just, you know, uh, grateful for the moment and, uh, again, thankful for all, all the people who, who helped get us to this point uh, safely. I mean, it's been an enormous, unbelievable uh, undertaking uh, what we have managed, uh, you know, this summer. And uh, to, to be at this point – uh, man, that was a happy locker room. And, uh, you know, just excited to get back to work with them and uh, hopefully continue to grow up a little bit. And, and you know, our schedule sets up well. Uh, we've got a game next week at home. We'll be excited to play at home. And, and then an open date. Again, just 
just giving us more time to get get our team, uh, you know, developed and and ready to go to hopefully, uh, you know, make a good strong run. But uh, awesome, awesome night. And uh, with that, I'll take the questions. Line is open for questions. Yeah, but this is Matt with the state. Just what what was the entire day like and kind of leading up to the game? And then once the ball was kicked off, did it kind of feel like just a typical football game? Yeah, yeah. Well, the day was you know just normal for us. I mean, it was it was a it was a different experience at the hotel, that's for sure. Uh, just because of how we had to do things, you know. We but we made it work, uh, and everybody just. You know, we, we've always had a lot of servant leadership in our program, but man, I got a chance to see it firsthand uh, on this trip. You know, uh, just seeing everybody step up and have to perform, you know, different roles and, and things. And, you know, we, we, we literally served every meal to our players, our staff, we did, we served them, uh, you know, because there was no staff to do that. Uh, we had to break down and set up, usually we had multiple meeting rooms. Well, we couldn't do that because of the social distance. You have to have one huge room and it's got to be the room for everything. So you got to eat there. You got to meet there. You got to walk through there. You got to, we did our movie there. Uh, so it was a very unique uh, uh, setup, but everybody embraced it. And, and our staff just did an amazing job to, to create as much normalcy as we could. But, you know, once we got on the bus and, uh, and we headed to the park, man, listen, uh, it's time to play. I knew we were ready. Uh, the mindset of our team uh, was right where it needed to be. And, uh, you know, uh, I thought Wake Forest did a really good job of trying to create, uh, you know, as much of an atmosphere as they could uh, with no fans. But, yeah, once we kicked it off, I mean, you know, we're always so locked in. It's really, as a coach, really just don't know notice that stuff. You're just so locked into what you're doing. Um, and, and caught up into the game and the strategy of the game that, um, uh, you know, you just it just seemed just like football. It was as normal as ever. Uh, you know, it was weird to be able to hear a little bit more than what you normally would be, but uh, it was a great experience. And, uh, again, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. And how about Josh from the Post and Courier? After all the uncertainty about if we even – get to this point I mean what did it feel like when you were finally there on the sideline and the game had started uh, you know it was emotional it really was uh, I mean it, it, it just listen man I mean this is what we love to do I mean this is this is not just a job I mean this is our passion this is what we love to do uh, I mean this is it's hard work but but I don't consider it work I mean this is this is our our passion, you know, coaches love to coach. Uh, everybody who's a part of the program, they love what they do. Our players love to play. And, uh, you know, uh, nobody had to be here. Nobody, every, everybody could have quit. Everybody could have walked away. Everybody could have gone, coaches, players, everybody. But, man, everybody kept the faith. And, uh, you know, here we are. And it was pretty, it was, it was, it was a special uh, and emotional uh, night, you know, it really was. And to just see these guys, their love for one, one another, um, it just, it, it just amazing. And it just gives you so much hope, um, you know, when you see uh, the type of young people that we have in our program. Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Coach Clawson went as far to say that it was just a win to get this, the first ball kicked off this year. How would you describe it? Uh, nice mask. Uh, oh. uh, it, I would agree. I really would. I think, again, the undertaking to get to this point, um, you know, it, it definitely was a win. I mean, it, it, no doubt about it. You know, these kids on both sides want to play ball. And I know that the, the Wake Forest uh, players have worked extremely hard. And, um, you know, this was, this was a, a special night for all of us, for all of college football, everyone who's had the opportunity to, to get back out there. And, again, hopefully, uh, you know, we can be a good example moving forward and, and uh, continue to, uh, uh, you know, do a good job.
Dad, this is Grace with the Athletic. Just how different is your offense when the tight ends are involved like they were tonight? Well, you know, we just – when you have a great tight end in there that's a, that's a threat down the field, it just creates more matchup problems. Uh, and, um, you know, he's, he's such a – Braden is such a unique guy uh, because he runs like a wide out and, he, and he's long. Uh, but he's got – he's physical. You know, and he, he creates that two back uh, presence, if you will, uh, in the run game. And uh, but just it just sets up a lot, you know, with our with our RPO game or play action game. When you got a guy who, who can really, really create matchup problems. I mean, he's a, he's a guy when, when you when you have a tight end who's open when he's covered. then that's a that's a problem. And uh, and that's what he, he is. He's, he's open when he's covered. And then when you got a guy like Trevor. Who, who has such a great feel for the game and, and uh, has so much confidence uh, in, in those guys. Uh, it definitely brings another dimension, um, you know, to us. And, and again, just uh, his maturity, uh, you know, last year was, was certainly a, a, a bummer for him, uh, but, it, but it was a blessing for him. And uh, that's usually how, you know, bad things that happen to us. Usually, you know, if you're made of the right stuff, it usually makes you better somehow, some way, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it became a blessing to him because he, he got stronger. He really learned more. You know, he was more of a basketball guy. Uh, he wasn't a highly recruited guy or anything like that. He was a basketball kid that was really kind of learned how to play football. And uh, he was a, a, a guy we projected. Um, and he's really, really developed well. So I think last year, as much as he hated it, uh, it was a blessing in disguise for him. Dabo, this is Pete at AT. Um, a lot was expected this season. A lot is expected of Travis and Trevor. It looked like they both got off to great starts. You had to be pretty happy with how oh, they yeah. played today. Yeah, yeah. I think Trevor, again, uh, it's an all-time passing record for an opener. And, you know, I, I think he played uh, maybe two series in the third quarter. And, you know, and again, listen, I mean, we had control of the game. Um and we, we needed to play – we needed to play those, those those linemen. We've got to grow some guys up, those quarterbacks. Those, everybody need, – we needed to play some guys. And, and I, I knew it was probably going to get a little sloppy, but, but man, that, that, that's going to make our team better. Uh, but Trevor was amazing. I mean, he really was. And we had a couple big drops. Uh, early in the first series, we were a little – it was a little funky. Amari fell down on a little outcut, and we had that. And then, uh, and then Trevor, probably the worst play of – of, of the night was him taking that terrible sack. That was, that was a bad play. Um, but uh, he really, right after, after that, he just, just came back and got right back in rhythm. And that's, that's what you, you want to see from a veteran player. He made a boneheaded mistake. He knew it when he came over there trying to, again, hold the ball a little too long, but um, man, he responded and he threw some great balls. Again, we dropped a couple touchdowns tonight, so we'll get better from that. But, he made some great throws, really great decisions uh, in our in our uh, run game and play action game. Uh, he made a couple nice runs, so he, it was special. And then Travis was just Travis. I mean, uh, we wanted to get him, you know, some really good work tonight. I think he may have had about twenty touches, something like that. Um, so really good night for him. He, he was involved in the passing game and and uh, you know had some good yards after the contact. There was a couple of times, you know, I thought he. He, he was a step away from, from scoring, uh, but good to see him get, you know, 100-plus yards and get in the end zone and, and, again, just get a get a good night's work. But both those guys were, you know, they were awesome. Yeah, but you were down a few guys in the second day tonight. Uh, what did you think of the way Andrew and, and Sheridan and the rest of that group played? Yeah, it got better as they went. I thought uh, they kind of hit a couple of Hail Mary-type plays on us where we were in position – uh, but we just didn't make a play on the ball. And, you know, I uh, thought it was good to see Booth come back and really kind of correct his mistake. You know, down the field, the guy's looking for the ball, and, you know, you got you to get your eyes to the sky there and, and make a play on the ball. And, and man, he, he, he corrected it and made a great play downfield on the ball. Uh, it was good to see that. A great experience for him and Sheridan and Anthony. Uh, I think they got the majority of the rest, but we were also able to get Fred out there. I thought Fred did some good things. I know he had the P.I. down there at the end, but he's going to be a great player. Malcolm Green's going to be a great player. Had a, 
had a bad penalty, you know. So, again, you know, two young guys there late getting a couple of bad penalties, unnecessary penalties, um, you know, hurt us. But, again, love their effort, uh, and this will be a, an opportunity for them to grow. Got a bunch of those safeties in there uh, as well. Uh, so, you know, again, overall, just really good experience. And then great to see those backers. I, I saw Avante Bentley. Uh, man, uh, does he look like a linebacker out there? You know, Keith McGuire was active, made some plays. Uh, Skowski got a chance to get back out there in the second half and get back to playing some football. And you know, so uh, you know, again, a uh, lot of lot of good stuff uh, that we can build on. Coach Trevor Grove, CUTargets.com here. Have you talked about those tight ends yet? Yes. Okay, uh, well, then let me um, mention the uh, – it was a pretty masterful drive, um, one-minute drill there at the end of the first half. Um, how nice was it to see that uh, executed so well? Yeah, I was really pleased with that. And, and uh, you know, first of all, we, we, we had all three timeouts. And so the defense, you know, we had get-the-ball-back defense. And uh, we were able to save one of the timeouts because they threw an incomplete. Uh, so to have a minute to go with a timeout, you know, that's what we practice. And, again – we had some situations come up like that, that sometimes you may not get. It might take three or four or five games before you have some opportunities uh, to go, to go, you know, execute uh, under pressure like that. And I just thought our guys did an awesome job. Uh, the only thing that, that I was disappointed, we took a sack and uh, we weren't quite as quick, you know, to get to that. We held our time out and, and then we got the first down and we, we lost about four seconds clocking the ball. We, we, we got confused on the clock or whatever. We lost about four seconds to just clock it. Uh, but I was really pleased with our, our execution with six seconds and a timeout. You know, uh, we needed, you know, we were a little out of field goal range and we needed to get, a, and, you know, so the execution being able to, you know, was something we practice, you know, knowing the situation, situational awareness, getting the catch, getting down, call timeout, give us a chance to kick that field goal. And then the CBT go out there and nail it, 52 yarder. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, that was that was really really cool uh, to see us uh, play so clean. Uh, you know, first time out. You know, in that that type of situation. So proud of the guys, offensively and defensively, getting the ball back, and then uh, you know going and getting the points. Hey, Dad, yeah. of those guys who who didn't travel today, would any of them be missing? Uh, could any of them potentially be missing significant time going forward? So, say that again? Yeah, just of the guys who didn't travel today, could any of them be missing significant time going forward? Uh, well, we've got a couple of guys that, that uh, you know, we've got some injuries guys on that list. I think we, you know, uh, you know Ben Batson, I, I can't remember. You know, he's, he's uh, uh, going to be a medical. I think we've talked about that, you know. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, like Justin Foster, hopefully he's, going to be back sooner than later. Xavier Thomas is really working hard, you know, just think about those two guys when we can get them back in, in the fold and, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mario and uh, DK, uh, hopefully we'll get those guys back soon as well. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anybody, you know, unless you've got somebody specific that's out for any amount of time. We had a couple of guys get banged up tonight. I need to, uh, hopefully that we'll be back this week, but we'll have to just, we just have to see, but, um, you know, all those guys, a lot of them could have been here and could have played, but we could only bring 80. Uh, and then we had some others that were out for, you know, whatever the reason was, um, uh, whether it be some type of injury or, or COVID protocol, uh, whatever. Hey Dabo, I think Tyler Davis went to the injury tent. Do you have an update on him? Yeah, I don't. He's one of them. Uh, you know, he walked off pretty good. So, you know, hopefully yeah, it's nothing serious. But, um, you know, they'll check him out tomorrow. Anything else for Coach Sweeney? Coach, I guess. Yeah, uh, Devo, um, there's, a, I guess, a lot of reasons for, for teams, your team and other teams out there to sort of sputter coming out of the gates. Uh, in that context, how – I guess happy are you that you guys are able to just jump all over a team just right off the bat? Yeah, really happy. And, and, you know, but our guys weren't happy because, you know, these guys take a lot of pride in their performance and, you know, our first groups and they, they feel like they left a little, you know, meat on the bone. Uh, you know, a couple, you know, Trevor was, 
you know, frustrated. He took the sack. He he missed he missed Frank Latson, you know, wide open one time. I mean, those are plays he wants to make. And you know, Mari had a big drop. Frank had a big drop. Mari fell trip, tripped up one time. We you know there was enough there that we could clean up. But from my perspective, for a first game, uh, man, I'm super pleased on both sides of the ball. I thought our defense did a great job. And, uh, you know, we made some big plays. Our, our first group offensive line did a really good job. Um, and I really felt like they would. Our ability to, to run the football. Uh, we, had some, we had some great runs. We ran the ball some on third down, uh, which is something that can really help us, um, you know, moving forward. And I think one of them was maybe a third and 10 or something like that. Uh, we busted a nice run. So, um, you know, I'm really pleased. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff happened tonight, but, but from our players' perspective, they're, they're, you know, they're going, man, we, we could have done more. And uh, so, but they also uh, understood, that, hey, we need to, we got to grow our team up. Uh, we could have left those guys out there and, and continued to play and all that stuff, but you know, that's not going to help our team. Uh, so it was fun to see those guys coaching and, and really kind of holding the, the younger guys uh, accountable, especially that second group uh, of offensive linemen. We'll take two more for Coach. Yeah, but what did DJ do during during preseason camp to give him the the edge to run out there first as a backup? Yeah, he just he just you know uh, just came out a little bit a little bit ahead from uh, from uh, you know, the, the opportunities that we had to to you know have competitive reps. Uh, you know, Street does such a great job of managing all that stuff, and and uh, you know he told me uh, last week that. You know, he felt like he's just a little ahead. Uh, it's close, but, uh, you know, that's where we are right now. And uh, I know Tyson got in there and did some good things, but, you know, he got, got held the ball. It was a little late on the, on the, on the sprint out there, and, and the uh, backer buzzed out and made a great play on the ball. But, listen, both those guys are really good players. Uh, you know, all, all, all three of those guys will, will play on Sunday one day. You can, you can book that, and everybody's going to be going, dang, y'all had all three of those guys? Uh, they're they're a long way from that. Uh, those two guys got a lot to learn, uh, and a lot of developing to do. But man, they're made of the right stuff, and you know I, I'm I'm super proud of DJ. I mean, it's not easy to come in here and pick up this offense the way he has. I mean, he's got a great command and demeanor and poise, and, and he went out and uh, did some good things. Um, so you know that's where we are right now, and and uh, we'll keep moving forward. But we're gonna need all three of them. We'll take one more for Coach. Dabo, just as a follow-up to Josh's question, were any of the absences tonight discipline-related or was it all protocol and injury? Just all unavailable. That's it. 